Hello friends, one more lesson, Law and Grace, lesson number seven. Let's start with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we ask you to be with us during this study that we learn more and that you bless the audience, the students mostly. We ask also your inspiration for us to learn more about um, your Bible, about God and, and the lessons that are for our lives. We thank you and we ask your presence in Jesus' name. Amen. Today we will talk about um, the law, the importance of the law. How are grace and law related? How do they work in their lives, in the lives of the believers? So the memory verse is Galatians 2.21 I do not set aside the grace of God, for if righteousness comes through the law, then Christ died in vain. In vain. So we will talk about the law when it was in a perfect world. Yes, there was a law in heaven, and there is still a law in heaven. Then law and grace, what is the importance, what is the role of each one. The law that benefits us, so some benefits for following the law. The grace that redeems us, and then saved by the law. I will start with this question. What is the right sequence related to salvation? A. Law, obedience, grace, and salvation. B. Grace, law, obedience, salvation. And C. Obedience, law, and salvation. How many of you went for A? <laughs> How many of you went for C? <laughs> the correct answer should be B. But uh, before we go forward on that, um, this, this topic, um, some of these aspects we already discussed with you, but um, there is uh, different opinions, uh, even among Christians, but um, in different religions, and in diff in, in mostly for the modern uh, uh, people, or the, the, the ones that are the millennials and the new generation, Generation X, and all of these guys that are much younger than me, um, about a, a softening of, uh, of, um, of uh, the law. Somehow they say, okay, we don't need to obey. But um, if you go deep on that, what do you mean you don't need to obey? I mean, if you don't obey, then you are not with the Lord. Yeah, but I mean, the most important thing is to love. And then uh, they love and they commit a series of, uh, of messed up things that um, might not be uh, on the side of the Lord. I remember I, I watched a sermon um, yesterday from Brazil and the lady said, okay, you are with the Lord, but then you go and dance and then you go and smoke and then you go and drink and then you go on those parties and then you... You have one girlfriend today, and you have another girlfriend today, tomorrow, and then uh, your life, you, you said that you love the Lord, but your life is not following, the law uh, is not following the commandments of Jesus Christ. Um, and your life does not seem coherent or consistent uh, with a behavior of, uh, of um, what the Lord expect from us. So that's the point that we might need to discuss today. Yes, the, as we mentioned in the beginning, there was a law in the perfect world. You were blameless in your ways from the day you were created, till wickedness was found in you. And this is related to, to Lucifer that later on became Satan. Because Lucifer, when he was in heaven, he somehow disobeyed. 
he somehow thought that, okay, God, your laws are not uh, for me. Your laws are not perfect. You are not a, a, a person that I want to trust. And then he rebelled against his creator. It's like, uh, it's like uh, when you have a, um, I don't know. I mean, you, you build something and then uh, this thing that you built uh, comes and, and, and rebelled against you. So it's something very, very weird that happened. But uh, that's what um, that's what happened to Satan. So the main concept that uh, Satan did was, or Lucifer did, was to disobey the law. He, he was against the law. He was not in favor of the law. So that's why we have to be careful nowadays if we just say, well, we don't need the law. Because this was where everything started. All the mistakes, all the sin in this world started with uh, not willing to follow God's law. Or, or, not, or not really, not wanting to follow God's uh, will for us. Was there a law before humans were created? Of course there was. Uh, Ezekiel mentioned the perfect behavior of Lucifer and his fall into wickedness. Um, he added, you were filled with violence and you sin. And then he started to convince people, convince the angels. And uh, he was able to convince one third of the angels. Can you believe that? It's, uh, I don't know how many angels do we have, but... Uh, it looks like we have a lot of angels that follow uh, Satan. Rules are needed to evaluate if an action is correct or not. Good or bad, fair or unfair, sinful or not. These moral rules establish the standards of what should be done and what shouldn't. I mean, we all have rules. We all have laws, even though we might not like them, but we have them. What do you mean by don't like them. Well, um, I remember when I was a kid, I mean, it was not... Um, one of the rules is that uh, we could not play soccer inside of the classroom. Ah. <laughs> when we have a, uh, a break, we will get a ball and we will play inside of the classroom. And it was a mess. The ball will go for, for the window and go outside, inside, and then we did, a, was, a, was fun, but was against the rules. And then what happened? One time the ball hit the lamp in the top of the roof, and the lamp choo, broke and fall and broke down. And then we have all the mess there. And on that exact moment, the next teacher arrived in the room. And then he saw all the mess, he saw the ball, so he called the principal, and the principal went there, and then the principal came there, and I, I never forgot that. He was saying, who did that? Of course, someone should have done that, because uh, we all, uh, I believe all of us were playing, but um, maybe a few were not playing, but um, he asked, for us to um, to tell ourselves, I mean, to, to say, okay, I did that. So a group of people went there, and I included, so I had to be honest. I, I say, okay, I was playing, so... <laughs> and then a few guys stay sitting down as they were the saints. And many of them were playing, but they could not uh, stand to, to have a notation in, in, in their cards and take home, and then uh, the pressure at home will be very bad. And that's why um, they uh, they kind of um, broke the law, but they didn't want to confess it. Isn't that something uh, related to us nowadays? We break the law all the time, but uh, we don't want. We pass the traffic light on the red, we go over the speed limit and then we contact our friends and then I say, can you clear that uh, ticket for me, please? I say, well, what's that? I mean, you broke the law. You have to assume that. 
But um, that's what I'm saying. Sorry to, to this detour a little bit. But what I'm saying here is that there are rules for everything. And when you break the rules, we get in trouble. And, 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 that's, and that's the point here. Therefore, there was a law in heaven long before humans existed. A divine rule that ruled whether a being was irreproachable or sinful. sinful. God created moral beings and established a moral law that governed them. This law is valid both in heaven and on earth. Um, I went to my granddaughter's uh, house a few months ago in Colorado, and then I saw a sign there on the wall. My daughter has a, a, a very peculiar way to teach the kids, and she always talked and talked, and she does not like much about uh, punishing, but uh, but when they commit a mistake, she will sit with the, with the girl and say, okay, this is not right. And, and then she put this, uh, this sign on the wall, no spitting, no yelling, no hitting, no screaming, no throwing, no pinching the young brother. And then I was thinking, ah, oh, that's interesting. There is law. Even sometimes we don't we don't have those things there, but we know that there is a code of conduct in every single thing that you do. Like I am a professor. You know, if one day I say, well, I'm not going to teach today. Uh, whatever, I, I am not in the mood to teach. Yeah, but I mean, I have a salary. I have to teach. I, I get a salary to teach. If I don't teach, I am breaking the rules. So what kind of uh, uh, employer will will stay with me? I probably will have a notation in my card. Hey, this teacher um, missed the class on these days, on these days. Huh, how about if you miss the class? I have some students that um, they Somehow I teach online and somehow they forget about my class. And then they tell me uh, one week, two weeks, oh, I forgot. I say, well, I mean, what do you expect me to do? You have a class and you didn't show up. You have a class and you didn't do anything. So how can I work with you on that? Yeah, give me a chance, please, 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 please. Well. Uh, sometimes I give, sometimes uh, depends on how long or and depends on how is how what kind of excuse. I, I think forgiveness um, or forget forgetfulness might not be the best. And then uh, maybe one one uh, week I can forget. I mean, yeah, students are watching this. Uh, forget about what you you listen, but um, there are laws. And then if we don't abide by the laws, we get in trouble. And this is in all society. This is in all areas of our lives. And then it's not different in heaven, it's not different on earth, it's not different in the spiritual world. There are laws. So we cannot say, I love you, Lord, but I don't follow your commandments. I, they, they are too strict. What are they? They are too strict to do not uh, kill, do not commit adultery, do not lie, do not steal, do not covet your friend's uh, things. Are, are those rigid? By the way, if we don't do that, we get in trouble, as we are going to see in, 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 in another slide. Law and grace. Set your hearts on all the words which I testify among you today, which you shall command your children to be careful to observe all the words in this law. Moses' speeches in Deuteronomy stressed how necessary obeying the whole law is. The law is inherent to the covenant. Nevertheless, God didn't say that he would give them the promised land if they obeyed the law. By the way, they didn't obey the law and God gave them uh, the promised land anyways. 
He didn't take them out of, a, of Egypt because they were obedient. Um, he did it for love. This is grace. God's grace forgives us for having violated his law. And God's grace enables us to obey his law, as well as uh, an obedience that arises from our covenant relationship with him. So, again, it, it is, starts with God, it starts with grace. And then, and then the second thing, as we accept the grace of the Lord, accept salvation of the Lord, we will develop this will to obey Jesus Christ. And we will obey Jesus Christ again using God's power. Because in our strength, it's very hard to obey. The law given upon Sinai was the enunciation of the principle of love, a revelation to earth of the law of heaven. It was ordained in the hand of a mediator, spoken by him through whose power the hearts of men could be brought into harmony which, with its principles. Let's uh, explore a little bit about um, obedience versus legalism, because people say, okay, um, mostly the Seventh-day Adventists, they say, well, you... You say that uh, only if you um, if you keep the Sabbath you go to to um, to be saved. If, if you don't keep the Sabbath you don't go to to heaven. And and then you guys are legalists. Well, um, I, I will not discuss about the Sabbath uh, with you today because I have done a lot in the past. Uh, uh, in the past months, uh, when we discuss about uh, uh, the Sabbath in the Bible and the, the importance to have uh, a day, but uh, let's skip the Sabbath. Let's let's talk about uh, laws. Let's talk about um, the difference between legalism and what means legalism. They they call us legalism. Well, we I believe we are not legalism legalists, but uh, maybe some of us maybe as as some of uh, Christians of from other religion can be legalists too. Once they put the definition here, once they um, they are, they think they follow um, the law and then they will be saved. So that's that's the main thing. Instead of being saved by the grace of Jesus Christ, by the blood of the Lamb, that's uh, salvation by faith in Jesus Christ who died for us. They think that they can do something and then be saved. They, they, they can do something and then God will, will um, reward them because of what they do. And this is the concept that we get since we are kids. I remember I was in church and, and then, uh, well, if you want to go to heaven, you have to do good. You give offerings, you help the, 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 the poor, and then uh, you... You read the Bible and you keep the Sabbath and then you go to heaven. You keep the law and then you go to heaven. And and that was and that was kind of a mistake. Uh, fortunately, we uh, when when we grew up, we figured out that it's not exactly like that. We go to heaven because we accept Jesus Christ and then we follow we follow His commandments. So I went to the dictionary to see what is legalism. And then the definition of legalism was um, according to these ones here. Excessive adherence to law or formula. Okay. Um, the theology definition say dependence on moral law uh, rather than on personal religious faith. So now we have a little more specifics. So legalist is the one that uh, think that... Uh, uh, they, their dependence, their religion is based on, on the law. And then we go further on that, putting law above the gospel. Uh -huh. So this is the biblical definition of legalism. So when, once you think that, um, I think that's the problem with the Israelites. They went so much into the law and, and create other um, uh, further laws in, on top of that. 
and and then they they create so many things so many minutias so many small laws and uh, and amendments i would say amendments and amendments and amendments and they follow the law more than they follow god what do you mean by that well um, we will we i think we studied this last week that um, uh, they would uh, pay attention to the law they are pay attention to the ceremonials and forget about the poor the widows and their old people they will abandon these guys because they would not spend money with that they better bring the money to the church and that was really messed up let's go back here salvation by law so that's what we are talking about legalism putting the rituals of one religion first being rigid and judgmental about that judging without love well i put the the exclamation the interrogation uh, points there because uh, because i was thinking well should we judge i'm not sure if we should judge anyways okay let's move forward there are some benefits to follow the law and then let's take a look on that and now israel what does the lord your god require of you but to keep the commandments of the Lord and his statutes, which I command you today for your good. Love, one of God's qualities, permeates the book of Deuteronomy. God loves and asks for love. Why would a loving God put limits on his children with a strict law? Because he loves us. God wants us the best. The best thing will happen to us if we obey his commandments, his, his structure. And remember, life has structures. When we don't follow them, we get in trouble. Spirituality has structures. We don't follow them, we get in trouble and we lost, we lose our spirituality. The law, the law is like a protective fence. It keeps us from making mistakes. It also teaches us how to have a healthy relationship with God and our neighbors, which is for our own good. So once we don't have laws, we got in trouble. See what can happen. There are discussions, there are... Um, there are um, death, there are prison, uh, and then all of this can happen once we don't follow the laws. The reason that God gave us on that is for us to prosper. People say, well, what's the problem is, uh, with this boy that uh, he just stole a few things there? I mean, well, if he, if a boy like that he stole something and nobody, um, and nobody said anything and his parents were protecting him, they say, well, forget about that. It was just a a pen it was just a keychain it was just a small thing I, i'll pay you this is the beginning of a thief because this boy when the, he does not know what is right and wrong he does not he starts doing wrong things when he is young and then on top of this if there is no uh, punishment if there's no consequence he will do more and more and more and more so people must know that there is consequences when you disobey the law by the way why are you um, that's why we have the law you should not you should not steal okay those are the commandments um, I was thinking, um, do you remember any, um, one day I will transform this class in a panel and I will have more attendance. Um, I, I'm thinking about that. So consider yourself if you would like to come 
uh, virtually and then we can have a session maybe on Friday nights or Friday evenings just to, to discuss this issue a little more and, and have uh, more people uh, speaking uh, instead of just me here. But one thing that I was uh, considering here is um, what, are, what are the benefits that we can have for obeying the law? Um, like, uh, let's, let's take a look here. Um, you shall not have no other gods before me. Um, and then I will consider, um, when, when we, I will consider this first commandment and then the second one, you shall not make idols. Um, you shall make no idols. And this is, uh, is uh, I am teaching now, uh, uh, um, I'm uh, sorry, I'm going to teach in the next uh, quarter uh, class on substance abuse uh, addiction. And I'm preparing now the, the class, uh, the materials for the class. And then I was thinking about that, that this is the verses in the Bible, the commandments, first and two commandments that talk about addiction. Um, you should not have an idol. You should not have anything be, be, between you and God. You, you have to have a clear access to God. Once you use something that blurt your mind, like uh, alcohol, like drugs, heroin, marijuana, whatever it is, that affect your mind, you block the connection. So you have another God before God. And then your relationship with Him is going to be altered and and that and that's a problem and that's a problem once you have that you will have um, trouble in life diseases mental diseases um, relationship problems with uh, with your spouse with, uh, with with your colleagues with your whatever relationship because a person that is addicted to something that's something is ruling his or her life. So whatever he has, he is married, he is, uh, has a girlfriend, a boyfriend, a, a father, a mother. First is his addiction. And second is people around. If it's not second and third. You don't believe me? Well, we see cases. I have seen cases that, 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 uh, that uh, young folks are addicted to a drug. And they will steal from their parents whatever they could to sell. And if they don't steal money, they steal money or, or steal things to sell to buy drugs. Because their addiction, they're addicting. They have other idols before, before God and before everything. Let's, uh, let's uh, go, uh, let's choose another one. Um, you, you shall not murder. I mentioned the example of uh, Desmond Doss. He refused to uh, carry weapons when he was uh, in the military. And he was sent to the Second World War to Japan. Uh, and then in the, in the Battle of Okinawa, um, he was a medic um, in, the, in the military there. And people joke about him. People make fun about him because... Besides, he was um, uh, um, didn't want to uh, handle weapons. He was vegetarian. He was a Sabbath keeper. He was a Seven Day Adventist. He was um, he was a Christian. And then uh, when he was there, um, and, and, and but the main thing is that he didn't want to kill anybody because the commandments say you shall not murder. By the way, this is a problem for international churches as the Seven Day Adventists. We had, um, during that time, we have uh, brothers and sisters in Japan, and then we go there to kill. Uh, who, who who knows if we are killing our brother from the same denomination in a, in a war? So war is not from God. War is from the devil. And then whenever we have war, we have death and we have suffering. And I'm not sure if war solved anything. But in any case, the Second World War was 
uh, and the Japanese war was a was a war for defense of our country. So um, that's okay. We are not gonna get into this issue. But Desmond Dawes didn't go to this, and in the Battle of Okinawa, he was able to save about 70 people that were, uh, I mean, hurt in the, in that battle. And he and he was able because he was a medic. He was able to save, including he saved some Japanese on that uh, on that war, because his concept was was a concept of no um, no killing, no killing, uh, and then that's advantage. Um, he became a hero, uh, and then he was condecorated with um, with um, a medal from uh, from the United States president for that. Um, you shall not commit adultery. Well, that's an easy one. Once you commit adultery, what can happen? You can be killed. Yeah, because people, when once they know that you you slept with somebody else uh, that were theirs, you 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 better run, man. <laughs> that's not a that's not a, a, a joke here. You shall not steal. Well, that's clear. If you steal, you go to jail. Yeah. If you use drugs, you go to jail. You know, when I was, uh, I used to work in a jail facility in California as an instructor for uh, helping the uh, the inmates uh, with their substance abuse. And then when I was talking about drugs, I will I, I would tell them one thing. You know, if you use drugs, we have three options for you. One is jail, and that's the one that you already have. The second is hospital, and then it's going to come early uh, or soon if you don't change. And the third is death. Jail, hospital, and death. Those are the three consequences if you, if you start using drugs. And the same thing with, um, with steal. You shall not steal because, because jail is waiting for you, and who knows? Um, if that is not coming to you. There was a, a, a history of a boy. Um, he was a young adult, I mean, maybe uh, 18 years old. And uh, he was with his friends and his, he didn't know. Well, they say that he didn't know. His friend, um, uh, he was driving and then his friend asked, okay, can we stop by this uh, 7-Eleven we, we will buy some uh, um, um, sodas there for us, some snacks. So he stopped by and then the guy went inside and guess what? All of a sudden he heard, he heard a big uh, explosion, boom, boom. And then uh, the guys came back from the store and told him, uh, turn the car, the engine and let's go, let's go. And then he, the, the friend enter in the car and they run away. And then this boy asked, what happened? So someone hit you? And then the guy said, well, um, we tried to assault the owner and, and, and steal the snacks and the things there. But he had a weapon. And then we start fighting with him with that weapon. And then we ended up killing the guy. Huh. Guess what happened? This friend of, uh, of the driver was cocked and he got life in, in prison, a life sentence. And this boy that um, he claimed that he didn't know anything about that, he was just driving and uh, didn't know that the guys were stealing anything. But because he was with bad company and then uh, the cameras saw him the camera saw this guy killing the other guy, and the camera saw the car. The, the camera um, filmed uh, who was inside of the car. He was um, arrested and judged and convicted to 25 years in prison. So he already had about 20 uh, years old, almost 20 years old. So he would stay um, the prime time of his life in prison. Yeah, he was going to stay there until he was 45 uh, years old there. So that's tough. That's tough. Because 
of something he claimed he didn't do. But uh, again, you shall not steal because if you steal, you are going to get in trouble. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. And you should not covet things that belong to your neighbor. And then um, those are things that um, uh, protect us. If you are honest, you will be you will be um, a person that people trust. So there are some benefits on that. When see people know that they can trust you, they will they will give you uh, more opportunities and more chances and, and a better job. The grace that redeems us. And remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt, and the Lord your God brought you out from there by a mighty hand and by an outstretched arm. Therefore, the Lord your God commanded you to keep the Sabbath day. We already talked about that uh, one time uh, during these sessions, that um, when Moses uh, gave the commandments uh, to the Israelites, he said that um, uh, they should uh, keep the Sabbath, not only because on the Sabbath God created uh, the whole, before the Sabbath God uh, created the whole earth and the Sabbath was put there for us to remember the creation. But now they told the Jews, the Jews, hey, you keep the Sabbath as a remembrance that you were delivered by me from the, from the Egyptians. So there was two, um, two um, motives to follow the Sabbath for, that, uh, for the people, for these people. Saved by law. So we now go, go to that uh, issue about legalism. Therefore, understand that the Lord your God is not giving you this good land to possess because of your righteous, for you are stiff-necked people. <laughs> So they were not obeying, and God gave these, uh, these benefits for them. How is our own righteous? How well we obey the law related to our salvation? God planned our salvation before creating the first human being. Jesus had already died to save us before we did anything good. So this is just to confirm that uh, the law, the grace is before the law. There is no good deed that can do that we can do to obtain salvation. God has done everything needed to save us. God offers His grace, no matter how we behave. But when we accept His grace by faith, He writes His law on our hearts and change our hearts, change our hearts that are from stone and put a heart that is from flesh a heart that is uh, following God and then putting our minds, uh, his spirit and his inspiration and power to obey the law. God loves the sinless angels who do his service and are obedient to all his commands. But he does not give them grace. They have never needed it, for they have never sinned. Grace is an attribute shown to undeserving human beings. So we are the ones that uh, are getting grace and you don't deserve that. We do not seek after it. It was sent in search of us. God rejoices to bestow uh, grace upon all who hunger and thirst for it. Not because we are worthy, but because we are unworthy. Our need is the qualification which gives us the assurance that we shall receive the gift. So we are going to finish this part uh, singing um, a song that um, if you are Christian, you might remember this song. So sing along, okay? Don't let me to sing by myself. When we walk with the Lord in the light of His Word, what a glory He sheds on our way. While we do His good will, He 
abides with us still, then we all who will trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Then in fellowship sweet, we will see Well, I hope you uh, got the message here that uh, the conclusion is that uh, Jesus Christ gave us salvation by grace. We are not saved by law. We are not saved by following any commandment. We are saved by the grace of Jesus Christ. But when Jesus Christ inhabits our hearts, our minds, and takes over our lives, he will ask us to obey, to obey his commandments, to follow his example. Because Jesus, when he was in human form, he never disobeyed God. He was always under the influence of God, following the orders, following the steps, following the plan for his life. And the same should be in our, in our decisions. Follow Follow Jesus. Let's pray to finish. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your blessings. We thank you for your grace, for sending Jesus Christ to save us. We ask you to be, to Jesus, to be with us. And we ask for your Holy Spirit, for the angels, for power, for us to overcome the temptations and be able to obey your commandments and be with you until you come back and we can live with you forever. We thank you for everything in Jesus' name. Amen.